My name is Dr. Pearson, the lore explorer and writer for a community called the RPC Authority, and today we're going to be looking over the RPC Authority's mobile specialized teams and their unique capabilities. Hey, Pearson, I think it's my turn for today's video. Is it? What day is it today? Um, I believe it's April Fools. Oh, my bad. Um, yeah, sure, you can take over. Have a nice day. Yeah, thanks, man. <clears throat> hey. My name is uh, Dr. Pearson, an explainer and writer for a community called the SCP Foundation, and today we're going to be talking about the five characteristics of the Foundation organization, starting with Class D's. Class D personnel are essentially the test subjects of the SCP Foundation, pulled in from all walks of criminal convictions, but mostly those within death row. Of course, they get their test subjects from other sources, but let's not get the International Criminal Court involved for legal reasons. Speaking of legal reasons, Class D personnel are, under previous interpretations, used to be terminated on a monthly basis. The Foundation has since changed after that, realizing it's considered a waste of resources. But then again, we terminate Class Ds whenever there's a catastrophic incident on a site facility when deemed necessary. Test subjects within the Foundation are also primarily subjected to various tests and anomaly ex experimentations, but often in some circumstances are used to be fed as nutritional sources to SCPs that are denoted to be creatures or wildlife species. <sighs> in other words, D-Class are often used for food for SCPs. Yeah, um, I, I have no way of putting that easily, but yeah, D-Class are used for food for SCPs. Security guards, the protectors of our facility, are always on duty to secure, contain, and protect SCPs whenever there's an oncurring incident. Hell, sometimes even the researchers play a task not one, not two, not three, but sometimes four outside an SCP's containment chamber. Like, that's a lot of resources being allocated to just one room to guard, and when you have other SCPs to consider even guarding, that is still a lot. But that's fine, the Foundation has plentiful security staff to ensure the safety of all personnel, unless the SCP breaching containment has caused something catastrophic, which then forces security to prioritize containing that, and then, well, a lot of things happen. Like killing Class Ds, when deemed necessary. The men, the women, and the symbol of hope, Mobile Task Force. They are the Special Operations Units and Specialists of the Foundation Organizations, and most notably consist of Alpha-1, Epsilon-11, Nu-7, and Epsilon-6. But despite the amazing reputation of these MTFs and those not mentioned, casualties are still a problem that seemingly baffles the Foundation leadership. Death is just seemingly a normal behavior that occurs in this job, and my friend Sergeant Rockefeller from MTF Nu-7 always assures me that MTFs being slaughtered or being incompetent is simply propaganda from our adversaries. Wait, what do you mean I miss Sergeant Rockefeller's funeral? Um, I have nothing to say here really, just um, the Foundation somehow has a lot of money and is able to financially fix problems as if inflation does not exist. So yeah, don't um, leak our budgets to the media because it might crash the economy. Please don't. The O5 Command is the highest authority within the Foundation organization. However, there is an entity within the Foundation that often can overrule the O5 based on ethical and moral regulations, and that is the Ethics Committee. The Ethics Committee are, sometimes seen as a joke by some researchers, and including myself, <laughs> The people that uphold some semblance of ethical, moral stance that enforce ethics within the Foundation. There have been rumors that the Ethics Committee is above the O5 command, but again, these are rumors and the idea that the ethics being above the O5 is outright silly, but kind of funny sometimes. Then again, there are some those who believe that one of the O5 members lead the Ethics Committee, or that the Ethics Committee operates their own mobile task force. But at the end of the day, shenanigans exist within hierarchies, and leadership is contested by those who deem it to be a threat to the organization's operations. And yeah, um, that's it. Thank you for watching. <sighs> I swear to God, recording this is kind of annoying. But like the whole shtick with like Doctor Bright and what he's not allowed to do, like that whole Doctor Bright what he's not allowed to do lesson, all that shit. 
he would have been fired <laughs> like i'm not even joking like he would have actually been fired for all of like his stupid like incompetence and unprofessional shit like i don't even understand how he's like he was like, even allowed to keep his job because of that like what the fuck <laughs> <sighs> whatever man whatever <laughs>